Hello world and welcome back to another immersive engineering tutorial where today we're going to be talking all about the excavator which is here behind me working away as well as the arc furnace. But as you can see the excavator is quite a large structure as you can see here. This is actually the back where you have the power, you've got three different slots where you can put power in. You have your export which is this little circle black hole here and then you also have your place where you can put a lever to turn your machine on or off. This is actually the front here. Now in order to build this there are actually two different parts to this. One is the frame which you see round here and the other is the wheel which you can see we've got some red stuff in there which is probably redstone. Now to make these parts you are going to need to make both parts sorry you're going to need to have blocks of steel steel scaffolding light engineering blocks steel sheet metal radiator blocks redstone engineering blocks and heavy engineering blocks now we've covered all of these before except from the radiator blocks now the radiator blocks they're made with four steel sheet metals one water bucket in the center and four copper plates and you will get four of these per craft now when using your projector obviously we right click in here we can scroll down to where we see excavator there is excavator 1 and excavator 2. Now there is no difference between these two excavators what it is is that excavator 1 as you can see is just the frame and then further up here we have the bucket wheel that is the wheel that is on the frame out here that's what I mean by it's in two parts and that means you have to line them up which is a little bit annoying but you can just do excavator 2 and this will actually do both of them together and then because I'm in creative I'm just gonna shift right click it into the world like that as you can see here we have got ourselves our lovely excavator right here and then using our engineers hammer I believe it's at the back here on the heavy engineering blocks you have to right click and this will form your excavator so now we know where everything is how about we just actually power this up and we'll place this on the back here so it doesn't just spit everything on the ground and you can see this is only mining up some red stuff however when you actually start mining some stuff yours is going to act probably a little bit differently one is only doing red stuff really it is it is coming up with different textures but as you can see that's actually just the byproduct of sulfur because it's actually mining something specific under here it's not actually mining redstone ore it's mining cinnabar now how do we know it's cinnabar you may want to end up using the excavator to mine a lot of a very specific ore. So it be that diamonds, iron, no matter what you want. You don't just want to keep moving this chunk to chunk to chunk to chunk. You can do that, but it's a bit slow. What you can do is actually make these core sampling drills. Core sampling drills are made with four steel scaffolding, three steel fence, and two light engineering blocks, and you get one of these in total. Now, I've placed this down in the world, and I have powered it. And You have to do this one per chunk. You can scan the same chunk multiple time for it will always give you the same answer what we do we place this down it's got four power points one on either side and then all you have to do is with your bare hand right click on it and it will now drill into the ground and then it will come out and tell you what the sample is so after this animation has come up again you're going to want to right click it a second time with your bare hand and it will give you your raw sample as you can see here it says here that we've got in this chunk 100% cinnabar, which has uh, got 43% saturation, and that's going to yield us 27,220 ore, roughly. 202 ore, roughly. It's also a crude oil reservoir, which holds 4,165,000 ,000 millibuckets. That is what I have on the side here, and I've, this is what I've written down. Now, this excavator has been mining a bit, so it started at 27,740, which means that well, this has updated now. As we've been mining things away, we've mined nearly let's say 400 or 300 ore out of the ground here so you can update you can rescan the same chunk every now and then it will give you an update of how much you have left before you have to move now the crude oil that is using the pump jack and using immersive petroleum but we are not going to be actually using that today we're just on about the excavator now you can move this core sample break it down and do it somewhere else so if we now do it in this chunk over here we could get something completely different all right, let's see what we have in here. This time it's actually cinnabar again, but as you can see, it's a different amount. The saturation is different, but it is still cinnabar. Also, the crude oil is different, as you can see here. So you would have to do this chunk off the chunk off the chunk, and then you would have to try and figure out what you want to excavate where. Now, don't worry, you don't have to hold these down, and even though they do say your coordinates there, you see sample taken how long ago, and with a coordinate there, what you can do is actually just right-click it on the world, show a shift, right-click it on the world, and you can see it sits there just in its little 
area so i like to place these down in all their individual chunks that way i know exactly what chunk they are corresponding to we know how to actually get our ores out of the ground but how about we actually you know refine them a bit up to this point you would have probably you been using just the regular furnace and how about maybe crushing your ores in set in order to duplicate them by crushing down into dusts now with the art furnace you can do two things you can smelt your ores and actually internally duplicate them meaning that if you put in one iron ore in here you will get two ingots out without the need of using a crusher to make the dust first then smelting each dust in order to make your two iron so it's just sort of getting rid of a step as well as that you can also alloy things in here so let's show off how we actually make electrum in here very shortly but first how do we build this thing to build this thing you're going to need nine different items you're going to need the block of steel steel sheet metal steel sheet metal slabs heavy engineering blocks light engineering blocks the redstone engineering blocks of course the steel scaffolding you're going to need reinforced blast brick as well as the cauldron now with the reinforced blast brick the, i recommend just taking it down from your advanced and reinforced blast bricks from the previous tutorial as this is going to be able to make your steel as well so there's no point using the blast furnace any longer so let's work our way around this thing. You have got a couple of things. First, this is your going to be where you place your lever in order to turn it off and on again. On the back, you're going to have an output for slag. So we're going to want this here. You're also going to want power points. This is very similar to the excavator. You've got these little three plug sockets in here. So we can just right click on the back here and this is going to give us our sockets. Then on the front here, this is going to be our output. We'll put another chest. Looking inside here, we have got a lot of different places. On the left here, we've got your general smell melting area on the right here you've got an alloy area on the top is where we're going to need electrodes and on the bottom we are going to need to have our outputs so and also we've got two different outputs here it's not really clear but we actually have six outputs here and this last square on the side is where your slag is going to be so on the left here what, I, what do i mean general smelting means if we put our ore in here so let's just place it like this if we place our ore in here you can see that nothing is actually working that is because we need to have electrodes on the the top they are h o p the electrodes here or graphite electrodes you know you have to have three in here in total in order for this to work you see we place three in here and now it can actually work general smelting means that this is just going to smelt things as normal and you can click this little button here to distribute your inputs as you can see like that if you keep it clicked as it's put as it's any items are being piped in they'll be piped in in one space at a time as you can see here it's very very quick we've got a lot of power going into here but that did duplicate the area since we have 12 going in here it did 24 at one and then in here we can see that it's all being pumped out now it was a bit quick but slag was created and there that's going to be at the back of course i've got a block in the way here but there you see we have slag going into the outputs there but having a quick look in here we know that we can alloy gold and silver to make ourselves electrum so how about we put our silver in here well we actually want to put a lot of silver in here but you can see that we can't actually put anything in that is because the silver is actually the alloy part of this you want to have the gold in this section like this and if i click that again that's just redistributes it now this is going to do everything the exact same as you would in an alloy kiln it's not going to really you know uh duplicate it it's going to put one to together with the other to give us the 24 different blocks now there is something to note with this however we obviously we cannot place our blocks in here obviously silver can't go in the generic gold can gold can't go in this side either because it cannot be alloyed however on the top here we have two different inputs as you can see here on the left and the right now these look work the exact same as the left and the right on the inside here this means that silver has to go on the right and gold has to go on the left however if we place a hopper on top here and then throw our silver down at the bottom here like this you can see that it actually gets placed inside here so if when you are automating blocks that shouldn't go in here or sorry ingots that go in here shouldn't be because even if we place gold in here or even if we actually throw ourselves a hopper and put gold in on this side now it will go in now you would think that this would work but it doesn't it's because it's the wrong way around you have to make sure that your alloys are always being crafted the right way around and this may be a reason why your arc furnace might not be working if you're trying to make say electrum and you've got it this way around the silver must be on the right and the gold must be on the left so now you probably want to know how to actually make these graphite electrodes and as i said they are made using hop graphite 
So if we right click in here, we can now see that it takes a few steps. You need to press down these HOP graphite ingots. You need to make the graphite ingots by smelting the HOP graphite dust. Dust is made in a squeezer from coke dust and the coke dust is made using cold coke and the cold coke is being made inside a coke oven. Let's go through this now. As you can see, it's a bit of a longer process. So one of the first things are actually showing off in this tutorial, which is fully automated. So first off, we're going to need the Coke brick oven. Of course, we just throw some regular coal in here or you can throw Coke bricks in here, coal bricks in here if you want. You know, like the actual blocks of coal and that will be put into here. Now, obviously, this is a very, very slow process. If you wanted to automate this, you don't really need to automate this. But if you wanted to, you would need quite a lot of these. Now you can just use the extracting conveyor belt in order to take it out. However, we are using the mechanism pipes to take the creosote oil out, but the immersive engineering pump will work. Now, as you can see here, this is a very, very slow process. So I am going to just throw a load of it in this box here and it will start piping over the edge. We now need to take this up and put it inside the crusher as the crusher is the way we turn things into dust and it will just pipe it out the front. We take this dust and we have to put it into our squeezer. The squeezer is obviously powered. We've been through the squeezer before. And you actually need eight of these coke dusts in here at a time for it to make one HOP dust. As you can see there, it's an eight to one ratio here. So you're going to need a lot of crushing. Next, you take this HOP dust and you put it just in a smelter. Obviously, once you have this up and running or made your first three electrodes, you can just put this HOP dust straight into the arc furnace and it will work but obviously you don't have the arc furnace at this point because you need to make it so a regular furnace works just in through the top out through the bottom and then we see it goes up to the press and with the press you need to have the rod press actually on it and you're going to need four ingots to actually make this work as you can see here it's just waiting we're waiting for all four to be created so just to speed this up i'm just going to spam a load of these on here since we don't want to waste all this time for this work and you can see it will start now pressing these electrodes in. However, these electrodes are actually going to be only made at 50% integrity. I don't know why this is a thing, but it basically adds an extra step of what you have to do is just go into a crafting table and put two together to give yourselves a fully integrated electrode. This is the best way of, you know, obviously getting all three electrodes that you need for your arc furnace right here. You can place them in the top and now it works as you would intend. But that is essentially everything when it comes to the arc furnace and the excavator. Now we know that doing this by hand, the old putting the graphite electrodes together to get it to 100%, that's a little bit tedious. So how about next time we go over auto crafting? That's right, immersive engineering has its own way of auto crafting things in this game and it's very, very powerful and very, very fun to make. Quite large though, I will say. But if you wanna know when that episode comes out, then please subscribe down below and ring the bell button to stay notified when this video comes out. But until next time, guys, how about you check out this video here to see how you can upgrade your base a little bit further with the Russia and the sawmill.